Hey everybody. So Alexander Siskind has been the number one go-to guy for M1 Mac and development. And recently he did this video where he released the M1 MacBook Air versus the uh, MacBook Pro 14 inch, I think the base model like eight core uh, M1 Max. And he did an Android build and in the Android build, there was inconsistencies, um, mostly because the 14 inch MacBook Pro, even though it has more powerful cores, it was coming behind the MacBook Air. Well, interestingly enough, the benchmark that he was using for Android Studio was um, this repo right here by Josh Hick. And if you notice, the last time the Gradle was updated on this benchmark project was two years ago. So by the time we recorded this, it had an outdated Gradle. Now, when I went to try it out for myself, the Gradle was upgraded five days ago. And I believe that um, Alexander probably just recorded this video before this was applied because the Gradle is for, I'm not an Android expert, but from what I understand, the Gradle is one of the build tools for building everything. So I assume that upgrading the Gradle will actually make it substantially more optimized. Now I don't have an M1 MacBook uh, Pro. I just have the M1 MacBook Air with 16 gigabytes. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna run this benchmark now and compare them to the numbers that Alexander was getting. Now, if you notice here, the Gradle that was being in use for the last two years was 3.5, and now it's been updated to 7.0, which is a substantial version jump. Uh, also for the plugins, Android J unit. Oh, okay. So the, um, the creator of the benchmark obviously updated the Gradle. In addition to that, I'll be using the Zulu JDK which is optimized for ARM. Um, and this is this is basically gonna allow the M1 Mac to be fully optimized for compiling Android Studio projects or JDK projects. So what I've done so far is that I downloaded the project and I also have the CPU usage history window. I have TG Pro's uh, temperature monitor so that we can see how hot the CPU gets right now. It's ridiculous. Like it's under 30 C. Uh, it, it's just not something you see every day on PCs. So, um, this is the current temperature at idle. It was recently rebooted. I also have the activity monitor down here, just showing memory usage. And on top of that, I'm going to have Android studio open with the project for the benchmark with the updated Gradle. Now, something that I also did was if you go into Android Studio preferences, you can increase the heap memory settings. I can do this because I have 16 gigabytes. Um, the default that it comes with is 1,280 megabytes. I upgraded it to, you know, 2,048 or two gigabytes. It's not that much of a leap. I think I could do three or four gigabytes without having any system performance issues, but I'm going to leave it at two because it was the recommended settings when I open Android Studio. So we're going to open up a terminal. Now, before we actually type the command to run the project, let's just pull from the repo to make sure that we're up to date with the current one. Awesome. Now I'm going to run the command. Now do note that because I'm recording, it might use resources as well. And the score might not be as high, but it's still substantially higher than other x86 um, laptops and desktops even that I saw on the spreadsheet that he had. So I am going to run it and I'm going to fast forward, but I'm not going to cut. I think the first run is going to be super slow. And then the subsequent runs are going to be much faster.
All right, so the benchmark finish, and we got one minute and 35 seconds, which is outstanding. Um, however, the lowest I seen this number on my personal machine is one minute, one second. I th And this was the first run, so let's do another run and see how low it goes. All right, so this seems pretty awesome. The second run, I got one minute and 10 seconds, which is a substantial difference from the previous result of one minute, 35 seconds. And just to put that in perspective, if we open up, if we open up the benchmark, um, he does supply an Excel sheet with a lot of people's submissions from their systems. And if we if we go by build time on the second run, let's sort this. So on the second run, a minute 10 is comparable to an AMD 5950X 16 core 32 thread, which is a beast of a CPU and a desktop CPU on the second run. Um, let's see if we can get that faster. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to close my browser. I'm going to quit it. I'm going to quit this antivirus. Oh, I guess I can't quit it. Well, I can quit the VPN. Let's, I'm sure that I'm losing performance because of everything I have open and the fact that I'm recording, but let's go to preferences and increase the heap size from two gigabytes to three gigabytes. We're going to apply it. It's going to tell us we have to relaunch Android Studio. Now, this is something I really like. Android Studio is notoriously known for setting PCs on fire, just booting it. And the fact that optimization have, have been improved for ARM architecture is amazing. Hopefully, moving forward, we can all realize that it's more important to have something optimized than to have something with raw performance on synthetic benchmarks. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to run this command. This is going to be the first run. The heap size is a little bit bigger. So maybe we can get that down to 105 or one minute, one second, like I saw one time. However, because I'm recording, I really doubt it. All right, so this one is complete and it did it in one minute and six seconds, which is ridiculously fast and also much faster than Alex's original video for the MacBook Air. I think the MacBook Air only got down to like a minute 30, but that's all because of the Gradle being outdated. Now, if you use the Zulu JDK, which is uh, the ARM version, which runs great on Apple Silicon. If you're running Android Studio, the latest updates um, that are M1 optimized, you can get substantial performance. And if we look here, you can see that as soon as I started a benchmark, the CPU, all the cores, even the efficiency ones were maxed out. And the highest temperature we achieved was, which was the highest temperature? All right. Uh, there it is. So the highest temperature on the one core was 75C, which means the CPU never cracked 80 degrees. Now, disclaimer, I did do the silicon pad modification to the M1 Air, and I think it's a great modification that everybody should do. Now, I know that the body, the bottom of the body may get warm, but the way I counter this is by having a shell around the laptop. Now, I was going to do that regardless of whether I, or not I did the silicon pad modification because aluminum is a malleable metal that can easily get nicked and chipped, and I would just want it to protect my laptop. So if you're an Android developer, um, seriously consider 
the M1 Air as opposed to the new ones. Now I'm sure that the new ones are going to be faster than the M1 Air. I think there was an optimization issue with the older Gradle, but now that it's up to date, um, I would really like to see this test ran again with an M1 Pro or an M1 Max, just because the Gradle was really, really outdated. All right, bonus content. So just for shits and giggles, let's max out the heap size. It's going to relaunch Android Studio. I stopped recording. I closed out all the temperature uh, TG Pro program and the activity monitor. And now that everything's been closed, let's try the benchmark again with four gigabytes of heap memory. Just for shits and giggles. Usually um, after two gigabytes, the it's diminishing returns at that point. All right, it completed in one minute and two seconds. Let's rerun it just one last time to see if we can get under a minute. All right, a minute and one second. We couldn't crack under a minute. Well, it's still relatively quick compared to other machines. So once again, consider the MacBook Air as your Android development machine.